Hey, how's it going? Dave TD here. Today's video is about gaming phones and whether or not you should get one because every company's approach to their gaming phone is a little bit different. And in front of me are three gaming phones, the Razer Phone 2, the ROG phone from Asus, as well as Xiaomi's Black Shark 2. All three of these phones came out in the fall of this year. They're all kind of like the new gaming phone in town. And if you're interested in getting a gaming phone, one of these is probably on your radar. Uh, there are other companies, lesser known companies that make gaming phones, but if you're gonna pick one out, I'd recommend looking at one of these three. So we're gonna go through these phones and talk about things I like about them, things I don't like about them, as well as whether or not you should get a gaming phone at all. So first up, the specs on these phones are different, but the SOC is the same. They're all running the Snapdragon 845, so powerful hardware with big screens, but they're also heavy and not super cheap. The cheapest one here is the one from Xiaomi, but it's still gonna be like $550, $600. Now the thing that separates the premium phones here are their screens. They're running faster screens. And that was originally the real differentiating factor for a gaming phone. Like originally last year when gaming phones came out, they were the high refresh screens. And the benefit of a high refresh screen is actually quite difficult to convey in a video, especially one being shot at 24 frames per second. If you see them in real life, they look very smooth. Anyone who's picked up a Razer phone and played with that 120 hertz screen notices it right away. If you're wondering, the 120Hz screen on the Razer phone does look a bit smoother than the 90Hz on the Asus phone, but not every game supports a high refresh screen. There's a lot of popular games out there that are capped at 60 or even 30 frames per second. The brightest screen of this bunch is the Asus ROG phone. It's an AMOLED display, looks really clean, really bright, and it's noticeably brighter than the screen on the Razer Phone 2. Now this is an improved screen. Last year, the Razer Phone 1 had a noticeably dim screen. It's brighter this year, but it's still not as bright as I'd want it to be. The other thing is that the Razer Phone 2 screen is once again certified for Netflix HDR. Thing is, it's not as awesome as it may seem. Netflix HDR content looks really dim on the Razer Phone 2 screen, especially if you're in a brightly lit environment. The visual detail from this HDR mode is better, for sure. Like, I can see the details in the bright areas much clearer on the Razer phone, but the overall image is really dark. Like, you need a really bright screen to take advantage of HDR content. That's just the nature of HDR, and the Razer phone doesn't have a super bright screen. The Asus screen is brighter, and although it's not HDR certified, I think most people would prefer the image on that phone over the Razer phone, even if some of the light detail is blown out or crushed on that phone, just because it's a brighter screen to look at. The Black Shark 2 screen feels more generic to me. It's a regular 60 hertz panel, but it still looks good. Now, the design on these phones are all quite different. I personally like the design on the ROG phone the best. It looks the most unique to me. Like, I like the way that the lines are etched into the glass and the copper accents on the back are nice. The Razer phone looks more boxy. It's got the whole next bit design going on still. The glass back definitely gives it a more premium feel and look compared to last year's Razer phone, but it's still a pretty boxy phone. The Black Shark 2 looks the most uninspired to me. Not that it's an ugly phone or anything, it's just more generic looking and it's just not as iconic as the other two phones. Even though these are all gaming phones, the only phone with a built-in headphone jack is the ROG phone. I'll be honest, to me, any kind of like gaming device, especially a gaming phone, should have a headphone jack. Like a gaming anything should have a headphone jack in 2018. But for whatever reason, these two phones, the Razer Phone 2 and the Black Shark 2, both need dongles, but that's just the way things are in 2018. Now in terms of the design ergonomics, none of these phones are super comfortable. I find that the Razer Phone is actually the least comfortable of the three in terms of like long-term gameplay. The corners of the phone kind of dig into your hand after a while. The other two also aren't super amazing, like compared to a Nintendo Switch or like a Game Boy Advance, those things are built for your hands perfectly. These are phones, right? So they have to be thin. They're never gonna be super comfortable in your hands. I would say that the Black Shark 2 has the edge over the other two, but it's still not amazing. Okay, lighting. All three of these phones have light up logos on the back that you can control through software to change their colors and stuff. And we've seen light up logos on gaming peripherals and laptops and stuff like that. They finally made their way into phones. And it's something that's actually a little bit different on phones than gaming peripherals. So I've said this before in many of my videos, lighting on laptops and peripherals and stuff like that, you play with it, you enjoy it, it's fun and it's cool, but that novelty wears off pretty quickly. For whatever reason on phones, I like it a lot more than I thought I would. There's something about customizing your phone to showcase a particular color that feels fresh right now in 2018. It makes your phone stick out a little bit differently from all the other phones out there. Like having a blue logo is something that I personally like. It just makes your phone look different. And for me, because my phone is a very personal object to me, it's just nice to be able to have that customizability. The Razer and the ROG lighting look the best to me. I feel like the ROG phone has more surface area for that light to kind of shine through, so it's like the most prominent. The Black Shark 2 also has lighting on the side, so you can make this thing go bonkers, but it's almost too much at this point. 
Okay, so the speakers on all three of these phones are front facing, so there's a reduced chance that you'll be covering the speakers while you're playing games, which is a good thing. They're all loud, but in terms of sound quality, I'd say the Asus is the best, the Razer phone is a close second, and then I guess more distant third is the Black Shark 2. All right, performance. All three of these phones are a strong performance with the Snapdragon 845. The Asus phone is running supposedly binned chips, which means that they're cherry picking chips that can run at a higher clock speed. These are supposed to be able to boost up to 2.96 gigahertz instead of 2.8. And when you run some benchmarks, there's a difference, but I don't think it's significant. And when you're playing games, I really couldn't tell the difference between them. They're all very strong performers in mobile games. They also have identical battery sizes, all 4,000 milliamp hours. The Black Shark 2 actually runs through battery life the quickest when I'm playing games. I'm not sure if it's a software thing because this is a pre-release version of this phone. Uh, the cameras, just a quick note on them. None of these have amazing cameras. I would say that the Razer Phone 2 is probably the best of the bunch. It looks sharpest to me compared to the others here and the low light is better than the Asus phone. Compared to Pixel devices and iPhones, these cameras just aren't nearly as good. All right, one of the last things I wanna talk about are one of the most unique features on the Asus phone. It's the air triggers. So if you're unfamiliar with what they are, they have sensors built into the frame of the phone that detect when you press it. So basically on a console, you have like your L2, R2, L1, R1 buttons, and it simulates that on a phone without there actually being a button there. It's just a sensor built into the frame. Now, the idea of this on paper is awesome. When I first heard about it and tested it out in Taiwan, I thought it was pretty cool. But now that I've used this for a while, there are limitations to this technology. For one, there's a little bit of lag. When you press it, there's a delay as to when it triggers. And if you bind it to something that's really important, like shooting, for example, you don't want there to be a delay. It's gotta be instant when you line something up, right? You wanna be able to see it, target it, trigger, and it should shoot right away. But that split second of processing time is annoying. You can bind it to other things that are just less crucial and it just gains utility in that sense. But for super important actions, I wouldn't bind it to the triggers. The other thing I've noticed is that even at the highest sensitivity, it's not as sensitive as I'd like. I'd like to be able to just graze it and it should trigger, but you gotta press a little bit. You have to be very deliberate with your presses on it. And that kind of takes away from the utility again. It's not a bad thing to have. It's kind of unobtrusive and you can't even tell that there's air triggers on this phone. I think software can fix it and make it quite a bit better, but right now it's cool, but not a game changer. Another thing is that the vibration motor on the Asus phone is very powerful. It's actually one of the strongest motors I've felt on a phone. If you're into that whole like haptic feedback life, then it'd be great. But it's also for games, like if there are games out there that take advantage of vibrations, then yeah, good phone for that. There's an accessory that this phone comes with. It's like a fan that's designed to keep the temperatures down. I've used it quite a bit and I gotta be honest, it feels like a bit of a gimmick. Not that it doesn't do anything, like when you plug it in, the fan does blow out air, but it doesn't really seem to make a difference in terms of the performance. I've tested it on several benchmarks, several stress tests, and I'm just getting the same kind of performance with or without the fan. So maybe if you're playing for like hours on this device, then it would make a difference. But for my personal testing, didn't make much of a difference. The Razer phone has an optional wireless charger and I really like this wireless charger. So it has lighting, which can be obnoxious at night. You can turn that off and stuff, but it has two positions. It's got a flat position where you can kind of lie your phone on it flat. And it also has a tilted stand mode where you can kind of prop up your phone and watch a show on it while it's charging wirelessly. It's pretty cool. The Black Shark 2 has this included controller, which you can clip onto the case and becomes a more ergonomic gaming experience. It works through Bluetooth. It's not like an analog connection, but yeah, I actually like this little accessory. You can get stuff like this for any phone, but the fact that they include it in the box is nice. So concluding thoughts. Are these phones really worth your money? Because these things are not cheap. They're definitely a premium just because of the fact that it's a gaming phone. I find that the Razer phone is the most well-rounded. The 120 Hertz screen looks awesome in the UI and certain games can really make use of that screen. The speakers are rich, the RGB lighting is cool, and the camera is improved this year compared to last year's phone. Here's my take on it. If you never play a game, if you literally never play a single game on this phone, it's still a great phone overall. I feel like you're just getting a really good user experience with this phone, and if you play games, it's a bonus. The Asus phone feels more, it feels more niche to me. It's definitely a gamer oriented phone. If you don't play games at all, then I wouldn't recommend this phone just because there's a bunch of features on this phone and the included fan accessory that are obviously geared for gaming performance. But if you're a gamer and you can take advantage of those things, then this is a good phone as well, particularly the screen. It's a nice looking screen. The Black Shark phone, it's the cheapest of the bunch, and if you're North American, it might be quite difficult to get this phone, but with the included accessory and the way this thing feels in your hand when you're actually playing games, it's actually a very good option as well. But 
I would only get one of these if camera performance really doesn't matter to you because for the money that you would spend on either of these phones, like the 800, 900, or 600 dollars, you can get a smartphone with a way better camera. So if that matters to you, I would opt out from a gaming phone. Now, if you're really in love with that RGB backlighting or the backlit logos, I mean, let's be honest here, these look really cool, then you gotta go for one of these phones. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.